If you're watching this video, it means that the game is already out. So try it out. Hello, my name is Andrew. I'm an indie developer currently developing a game called Tadpool Tales about a tadpole cleaning rivers and fighting pollution. But this week's video is going to be a bit of a special one because it's not going to be about this game. Actually, within these two weeks, I've been working on a very small project of mine, which is the 123 Dog of Volleyball. This devlog is about how I made an Android game in two weeks. So, you know, there's a dog. And this dog is gonna bounce balls. And you're gonna use your phone to tilt while you control it. And it's kind of like hot potatoes and you gotta keep the ball on air at all times. And then I also added a simple system where there's a loop ring that the ball has to cross it without giving you more score. And that's kind of the whole premise. The game itself will also have some customization like in the shop. Well, I should probably go, I should probably go a bit more technical about this. I'm not going to use the same project files in the game jam. I'm going to scrap that and then put in immediately a new one and you know, start from, start from the beginning. That of course enabled me to fix some issues and to write my code structure better. And that way it's also catered to the entire idea of, you know, mobile games. Player controls on the other hand, if you don't have a Nokia phone with the, you know, the keyboard and the tablet thing, you're not going to be able to play with a keyboard. So I thought the way to control the player would be through tilting your phone, right? And to jump is just straight on forward, just touch the screen. <laughs> During the first few days, that's basically what I did. I implemented the whole thing from, from the ground up. I added the loop ring system where it's just the spawner and it spawns at random the rings wherever you want. Also the snacks as well. I changed the scripts from the snacks to instead of bone script, I called it destructible script. That way I can apply that script to different objects if I ever want to add more to it, if that makes sense. Then after that, I figure out a smoother way to add the slow motion effect. For those who tried out my game before, you probably noticed the slow motion felt like it was glitching as it was going frame by frame. And from this tutorial from Brachis, I basically managed to make the slow motion feel very smooth and very crisp. Another thing I changed from that is the slow motion effect is not going to be something that's infinite. It becomes a consumable. That way the game feels much more punishing as it only lets you have a safe call only once. After that I implemented other scenes like the game over scene, the main menu scene, the tutorial scene, as well as the pause panel. After that I created these buttons that I thought that it adds to a really great addition to the game as well. So yeah, that's basically what I did in a week. Now the second week was more or less polishing and also playtesting, a lot of playtesting. I also added all the secondary tasks that I wanted to add, such as adding skins, adding more serializable systems. So that way you can track the high scores and all that stuff. I also added a nice transition, which again, I also learned from Brackies. <laughs> yeah. I'll try my best to post down all the information and the resources I took that helped me for this game. Hopefully it'll help you out as well if you're ever interested. And then one problem started to arise. Android's phones have different resolutions. Like, each one of them are different almost. They're like unique. So, I mean, it's okay with the canvas because you can always set it to, to scale it with the sizes, but what about the game objects? Like, what about the game world itself? Because my walls are basically the screen, the camera resolution screen. That's where my wall is. So what I had to do was actually just create a whole nother script that tracks the colliders. And depending on the resolution of the phone, I would have to set the colliders to that position. This was not the most effective way to do it, as now you can see that it, it's kind of clumped up all together. These colliders are all layered on top of each other. And depending on your phone, it activates the appropriate one. I mean, it works, so it's okay, but you know, that means that I have to do everything manually. So whenever there's another phone that I need to add, I'll have to manually do it and it will appear in the next build rather than, you know, being very responsive. If anybody has a much better idea or a better solution, please tell me how, cause I'd love to learn. <laughs> After all the player press that I've implemented and all, I added the shop as well. I quite like the way the shop looks. I learned the swipe menu from this tutorial. It was super helpful, so thank you for that. I started drawing several different skins. I don't really want to spoil the, the mystery behind it. But yeah, I'm really happy with how the shop turned out. 
I think the shop is a great addition to the game and it gives a lot of replayable values. And after all that, of course, I also did an oopsie. I added Unity ads. But you know, just like other game devs, your boy needs to get some bread as well. But don't you worry though, it's not gonna be one of those breads where it just shows up wherever you're playing. Those are really annoying. I wanted to create ads that'll only play if you want it to play, which is only at the end of the game, when you finish the game, you can press the ad button and it will automatically give you more coins. I think that way it's a much better and friendly way to have ads rather than appearing right in front of your face as you play. And after all those things, I think the game is kind of ready. <laughs> that's what you think. Check this! Ah! You're never gonna finish your game! Hi, forget about that loser. Now what's really cool kids is to always add feature creep to your game because that's always gonna make your game a hundred times better. You know what you're gonna do Andrew? You're gonna spend an entire day adding a useless feature that totally has nothing to do with the game just because. Oh god damn it. I can't even reach 5 score. <laughs> and so yeah, so I did. I basically added a whole new mechanic. For, for some random reason, the last few days, I felt like adding a whole new feature just because. And uh, it was inspired from Pachinko and Pebble. I mean, Pebble too! The concept is pretty straightforward. It's inspired from Pachinko, which is a very old school Japanese game that even nowadays it's very popular in Japan. I really like that game idea and I also really enjoyed Pebble. My good friend Seb showed me Pebble. Thank you, Seb, for, you know. Basically, I added this new currency called Dokens. Get it? It's tokens with. Do sh shut up. I don't know. I don't, I don't have any good ideas. I'm trying to be original here, okay? <laughs> So you can see that there's a so you can see that there's a tiny little basket that moves around left and right. And basically if your tokens fall into the basket, you get two tokens for free back as well. That way increasing the values and increasing your money, raising your chance to get the new skin for the dog that you've always dreamed of since you're a little kid. I have no idea what I'm saying. I am Andrew from Devlog11. If you don't remember me, you can go watch. Now on a more serious note, this feature creep is real and uh, jokes aside feature creeps are bad try your best to not do the same thing that i did which is adding a whole new feature at the end of the game it's a very bad idea i think the main reason why i did it was because i felt like the game wasn't fun enough and i wanted to add something else to it you know it it happens you do it you learn right so Shut up! <laughs> Long story short, you basically play the volleyball game and the more loops you get, from time to time there will be tokens falling from the sky and also at the end of the game it does some math and it calculates how much tokens you get at the end. I've done a lot of balancing with numbers to make sure you don't get too many tokens but also not too little to the point where it's not worth trying it out. You know, just balance. I think it adds a really nice niche to the game. Even though it's feature creep, I felt like I was pretty fortunate that the Future Creep is not breaking the game or doing anything bad to it. For more detail about Pachinko, you can look at this video right here that I saw and I did some studies on it. It's really interesting how the game is really old actually. And I think many people when they were younger, they probably played this game before. Now, after all of those things that I added and all the hassles with playtesting, Yannick was actually kind enough and uh, gave me some really good insights on how to implement leaderboards and uh, achievements into my game using Google Play services. It was pretty straightforward. I will link the video down below as well to help out whoever might be interested in using it. And uh, I think it adds a lot of value to the game. So now we have leaderboards and you can see you can kick your friend's ass and by comparing the scores and also flex on the achievements that you got. And after all those things were done, I started my build. Second time, nope. Third time, nope. 0 0.4, nope. All the way to 0 0.8 because I made so many mistakes during the, <laughs> during the build. But I think I finally managed. 
This was a really good experience for me. And I think when I'll be launching Tadpole Tales, I'll definitely be making less mistakes. So totally worth it. Great experience. Now for all the game devs out there who made devlogs about how they release their games and all that stuff, I think one thing that is missing a lot is probably a trailer or any other marketing and self-exposure. Obviously, if you are a big YouTuber or something, you might get a lot more players. But even then, I think getting involved and letting people know that your game is out is definitely very, very useful. I've been working on a trailer and I had two friends who helped me out on the translation and voiceover. So thank you very much for that. And yeah, basically check it out and let me know what you think. Hello, my fellow Shiba Inus. Do you like e-sport, eating snacks, and playing ball? Then I have something for you! Introducing 123 Doggo Volleyball Mobile Edition. Don't let the ball touch the floor. Keep the streaks going. Eat snacks. Put ball in rings. Play a pachinko inspired mini game. Unlock other characters. Have fun and I love you! Try it out. Give it a try. Just do it. No pressure though, you know, just, just, you know, just, you know, do it, you know, come on, do it, man. <laughs> if you enjoyed this devlog and if you enjoyed anything that I do, I really appreciate that you're watching and yeah, have a good day. Shit. See you next week.